We are here for a special occasion. The holidays are a time to celebrate with near and dear. Oh, oh, oh. It's the merriest. Say Merry Christmas. And scariest. <laughs> episode of The Incredible Dr. Pole. It's the Easter Bunny here. Easter here. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. He's a world famous vet with thousands of patients and a team that lives for animals. He's the incredible Dr. Pole. No matter what the calendar says. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my God. God. Charlie. Pole Vet is open for business. It's the Easter Bunny here. Yeah. Oh, he has to have a carrot. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, my God. Any season, any reason. Animals don't know when we're having a holiday, so they still get sick. Our practice is open 365 or 66 days a year. I was in my kitchen and I heard some thumping on the porch. I went out to look and she's got the extension cord and Christmas lights just shredded with most of it gone already. Let's go inside. Here, what do you want? Big one, don't sniff them all. Here, don't feed any to the dog, otherwise I'll see him tomorrow. See ya. Thank you. Charles is planning a big holiday surprise for his wife, Beth. I was thinking about getting Beth uh, a Great Dane. You already got her a goat. I know. She's never raised a Great Dane puppy before. Oh my gosh. And I think it's a pretty special experience. I kind of like the black ones. Mm -hmm. After all, Beth did marry into a Great Dane family. <laughs> I want to surprise Beth, but I also don't want to get in trouble because I picked oh, a nice. dog that she doesn't like. <laughs> you uh, better be careful. Since I had talked to Beth about the possibility of getting a puppy, I thought surprising her with it would be OK. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, these are the guys, huh? Yeah. Oh, super cute. Temperament is really important. It's just feeling the puppies out, you know, seeing which one was the match for me. He's the smallest male that we have. OK, the runt of the men. So they're all super cute, but I think he is pretty perfect. I think my wife will be very happy with this, although she doesn't know. So doing this is, is really cool. I've always wanted to surprise somebody with a puppy. And you get. You're a good boy. Before Charles hands over Beth's surprise Christmas pup, he's going to get a once over from Doc. I have a puppy, a Great Dane puppy. Hi, sweetie. Always excited for Danes. Oh, my gosh. Grew up with him, of course. You're so scared. He's not scared. He was the most chill and quietest puppy of the bunch. Oh. I, that's why I picked them out. You're never ready for a pup because every pup is different. Are you hiccup? The hiccups, yep. That's a good sign. That means the heart is growing. But if they want a pup, now they better do it when the two of them are there so that they can just work with it. Is that warmer? Yeah. I know my fingers don't taste good, huh? It takes a firm hand and a lot of smarts you know, just to train a puppy. I think he's going to be a good match for Athena. I think Athena's going to love the bejeebers out of him. Hopefully. Now, these dogs are fantastic, big dogs. It's going to love you like crazy, huh? But they have to be friendly. You're fine. And then you got the best thing you can have. I think that there's 0% chance Beth won't like the pup. But if she doesn't like the pup, I'm going to like it enough for both of us. Thanks, Dad. Yep. Christmas is coming. Everybody's in a good mood at Christmas time. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Hi, buddy. How are ya? Means go, go, go. It would be a perfect Christmas if she would come back healthy. We'll get him healed up, and he'll be ready to go back out and show off for Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Say Merry Christmas. Charles made a snowman in my own, and he used my glasses. Frosty the Pole Man. That's Frosty what I call it. Frosty the Pole Man. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Here, bud. 
At Rooftop Landing, a healthy reindeer is a happy reindeer. Hello, how are you? You need to get busy with your horns. Look how much more he has, huh? Today we're going to look at Sven. He's lame on the left front foot. Dave and Dan had worked on it before and just, it's just not getting better to their satisfaction. Let him walk for just a couple of steps, if you will. So left front. It started about five days ago. OK. And it was nothing like this. We thought we had it better. We gave a little painkiller. Yesterday, it wasn't bad at all. It's and now today, it's, it's the worst it's been. Hopefully, it's nothing major. Sven is very important. He's one of the main travelers. He does probably 30 to 40 events on the road. I thought it was the pad of the foot. That's what he sure didn't, surely didn't like. But you couldn't see anything there. No, it's that toe. Because this toe, he does nothing when I pinch on it. Easy. I know it hurts. Looks pretty normal, doesn't it? It looks pretty normal, but he sure is pretty dang painful on it. I so I can't find the magic spot to dig after. So we're going to try to see if we can rake off over the top of that and get it lanced open so it can drain, because that's the problem. He's got abscess pressured up in that foot. I have drugs in my pocket, so I came prepared so we could lay him down if we needed to. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe we're going to hold still. OK, it's in. That'll be a whole lot more comfortable for him than us trying to pick at that foot. OK, so this crack right here is what we're after. That's what he's having a fit about. Well, you got good eyes. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything. I'm going to open that up some. Ooh, there's a whole big flap that wants to come up. He must have stepped on something to have that look like it is right now. So it was moving around and pinching him. My initial thought was he had an abscess underneath it. But once he's sleeping and I can look at it better, it's actually sort of a three-cornered cut in the sole of the foot. So we're going to cut that flap off so it stops irritating him, and then let him start healing that on his own afterwards. So he's going to be sore for a bit. It's basically like I've taken off his toenail. And that soft tissue that's very tender, like if you rip your fingernail off, you don't want anybody poking at it. This is why he was having trouble with me poking at it. But it will allow it to grow now, because that flap of sole that he had that was kind of flopping in and out is gone now. He'll feel better and start walking on it pretty soon. We love working with Dr. Brenda. We're fortunate to have her for the last 15 years, probably. OK, great. He's on his feet. All right, so, I feel better. Me too. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'll see you later. If you've got problems, let me know. Sven is going to probably be still somewhat painful as this heals. But long-term prognosis, this should not phase him at all once we get past the healing phase, which will take a couple weeks. The ground is frozen, and Olaf is having a hard time. Last night, I was walking him, and then I realized he was wheezing really bad. It was hard for him to breathe, and he was breathing a lot heavier than all the other calves. Hi. Who's this? This is Olaf. OK. Hi, Olaf. He's super cute. <laughs> we just realized last night he's been wheezing. OK. Like, you could really hear it in his nose. Is he still eating? Yeah, he's still eating. Any diarrhea? Yes. Olaf needs to reach 350 pounds to qualify for auction at the fair. Illness could jeopardize his chance of making weight. My fear is he's not going to be able to pull through, and I'm not going to be able to show him at fair. He has a slight temp, yeah. This is my last year doing 4-H, so I really want to show Olaf. He does have a residual lung infection. Respiratory disease is a leading cause of death in calves. There's a couple different causes for respiratory issues, and that could be bacterial or viral, which are the main two. So I'm going to check them out, make sure there's nothing else going on. I want to go ahead and get a stool sample, make sure I'm not missing anything. OK. So I'll go look at this and see if he has any parasites. No parasites. The stool sample does not have any intestinal parasites, so I'm going to treat him for a bacterial infection. It could also be a viral infection, but sometimes calves, when they get a viral infection, they get a secondary bacterial infection, and we can treat bacteria with antibiotics. I like the looks of that face. <laughs> no parasites. Sweet. What we're going to do is an antibiotic 
it's just gonna be one injection. Hold on, bud. I'm gonna use a good, strong antibiotic. That way he is able to grow and prosper and gain the weight needed for fair. So that should take care of his respiratory infection. And hopefully none of the others will get sick. If you do, just give me a call and we can get them on the medication as well. But maybe isolate him from the others. Um, if it's a respiratory issue, the whole barn may get it. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Makes me feel extremely happy. He's going to be OK. This would be my first year showing a cow at fair but I expect it to be fun. Even if I don't place, I'm just going to have fun and spend time with Olaf. Christmas is still a few days away, but there's no time like the present to spring a surprise. I'm very excited for the surprise. I know Beth is gonna love this pup and I know it's gonna mean a lot to her. Doing this is, is really cool. I've always wanted to, to surprise somebody with a puppy. Merry Christmas. Reindeer? All I right. don't know. It's a present. You Everybody's gotta unwrap all it. here. <laughs> I hope you like it. It's non-returnable. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <gasps> you could just see the sparkle in her eyes. She couldn't believe that Charles had gotten her a puppy for Christmas. Hi. And I thought it was really cool. Brought tears to my eyes. Everybody loves a puppy. Yes, aren't you lucky? I'm so excited to have a puppy. We have a puppy. We have a puppy. I'm a little nervous, but I know I'm in good hands with Charles and Dr. Cole. Bye, Dad. Bye. We'll see you later. Yep. Thanks. Ate a pork bone last night? Yeah. It's probably around dinner time, around 5 o'clock. Rocky had way too much to eat at his family's Christmas dinner. My dad gave him a, a, a pork roast bone, uh, almost the size of a tennis ball. I'm pretty sure he swallowed the whole thing. OK, why don't we get him up on the scale? A cooked bone that big can split into numerous shards and tear up Rocky's stomach. I got up this morning, and he was yiping, and um, I've, uh, it's lodged in this intestine somewhere. and. I just had a trip and called Dr. Paul. When did he eat this? Uh, last night, about 5 o'clock. OK, put them on the table. Let's start from the back end. OK. If the bones are fried, cooked, or braised, or whatever, it becomes calcified more. They sliver and have sharp points. You OK, buddy? OK, put them on the table. Let's start from the back end. OK. Rocky ate a uh, pork roast bone almost the size of a tennis ball. Was he eating this morning or no. nothing? Rocky's been yelping in pain and could be suffering from internal injuries. He yelped after, so most likely what he tried to do is swallow too big a bone and hurt his throat. The biggest problem is if the bones are fried, cooked, or braised, or whatever, it becomes calcified more. Then many times it breaks in sharp points when they chew on it. Didn't stick in his throat. Hey, my suggestion, let's take an x-ray. OK. See what's there. When he swallowed it and it went to his stomach, David was wondering if that would be safe. X-rays will reveal the extent of damage the bone caused. Thorax, abdomen, everything. And whether Rocky needs surgery. If he has to have surgery, then he's going to have to have surgery. Leave him here and come with me. Stay here, Rocky. Stay. Well, he sure ate bones, but nothing is bad. OK. They're right at the back end already. Oh, really? They're already going down the tube. He'll take care of them today. The orc's intestines work very fast. Here in 12 hours, those chewed up bones are ready to come out. OK. Nothing hurting. OK. He ate bone, but it's digested already. OK. Just turn them loose and let them run rabbits. OK, awesome. Good. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Yes. Awesome. I'm just glad he didn't have to go to surgery. David can make sure that his father doesn't feed him any more bones. My dad owes me a doctor visit. <laughs> Come on. Don't feed bones, period. Yep, I agree with you. You won't buy it, I promise. 
Better be careful. Halloween at the clinic may be the reason for some per-a-normal activity. I've never been more nervous in my life than when Tater watches. Tater, come on, inside. You crazy cat. The first victim of Halloween is an eight-week-old German Shepherd puppy named Savage with a mysterious swelling on her neck. Her brothers and sisters were over to the house. One of them bit her, and I checked her, and she looked fine. Then this morning, we woke up, and it was golf ball size. It was huge. All right. Oh, my goodness, that is a honker. Are you going to clip your little neck? I know it's weird sounding. I know. <laughs> oh, you're fine. I know. <laughs> Siblings are playing or who is playing? Yeah, puppies on the same litter. It hurts. When I clip the hair off, basically it looks just like a big abscess with a soft spot on it. So it looks like it's just something that needs to be drained. Okay. It's gonna be just a little poke. What we're gonna do is sedate her just a little bit just to kind of take the edge off. She's a tiny puppy and she's a little underweight, so I don't want to sedate her too much. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> All right, let me take her back. Okay. And dinner all cleaned up for you. Bite wounds are prone to infection due to the amount of bacteria present in the mouth. Okay. Left untreated, an abscess like this could lead to sepsis, a deadly infection of the blood. First of all, I'm gonna make sure it's just pus and nothing more. I knew that I was not gonna be able to do that, so I made my husband go back instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. We lanced it to different spots, started squeezing it, and all the pus started coming out. We'll get some peroxide and flush it out real quick. We get the abscess drained. We get a drain put in it. So if we don't put a drain in it, it'll uh, fill back up if it closes. And of course, she'll go on antibiotics. When she put the drain tube in, she kind of looked like the Frankenstein bolts coming out of her neck. <laughs> no costume necessary for this little monster. Too bad she missed on trick or treating. Take her back. She'll probably get lots of extra love on Halloween. <laughs> oh. Good morning. Hello, Dr. Paul. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Lo and behold, when I walk into the clinic, I meet myself. <laughs> You stole my shirt. We see a whole bunch of kids that dress up like Dr. Paul. You're my twin. <laughs> it wasn't so surprising to see somebody at the clinic do the same thing. <laughs> I still haven't gotten my shirt back. It's an eerie night for an animal emergency. A mama goat is stuck in labor. The mom is getting tired of pushing because nothing is coming out. So yes, uh, in order to keep him out alive, you gotta hurry up. Pulling the kid out is necessary, but risky. The goat's uterus wall is very thin, and tugging too hard could lead to potentially fatal hemorrhaging. If it doesn't want to come quick, then you got to many times push it back in and find out what's holding it. I don't know. There's only so many minutes we have. It's after hours at the clinic. Dr. Pohl is handling an emergency labor. She had a, a goat that was trying to have little ones, kids, and she couldn't get the legs out. If they don't have it, within half an hour after going into labor, something is holding it back. Doc adjusts the kid's position and gives a tug. I don't know. A tiny little one, but he's very much alive which is more fun than anything. Gosh, look at that. 
Better voice already. Okay. You know, late night, who cares? Yes, I got you. You know, it's not just saving the mother, we save the kid too. I'm real happy that the, the mother's gonna be fine and she will have more babies. It's always nice to pull a live little kid like that. And you can see, you know, he comes out and within five minutes he has his head up and he's already screaming little goat. That's what they all do, scream. That's worth it. Yes, it was. Thank you, sir. She'll be fine. Get it home, get it warm, get some warm milk in it, and hopefully it'll be somebody's pet. Flies. That's a tiny kitten. Her name's Boo. Where did you find that one? My neighbor's porch. My neighbor called me because she had a mother cat and four baby kittens on her porch. The other three kittens are with someone else that she's taking care of, and we got this one. You got the one. <laughs> yep. OK, let's go have a look. She's really, really tiny. We just want to see what the vets have to say today. This is when I'm curious to see how much she actually One weighs. One pound, six and a half ounces. Wow, she weighs more than I thought she did. And yes, you bore me. This kitten, of course, has fleas, most likely has worms also. <sighs> it has a virus infection, and it's a female. And you are cute, yes. But none of it that cannot be helped. We vaccinate them. Gotta stay here, you can't jump from up there. Of course, we have to worm them. When you want to give a cat a pill, get the pill down as far down in its throat as possible, and it just blow in the face. I know it tastes bad. Swallow it. Thank you. And that actually scares them so that they swallow, and the pill is gone. OK. <laughs> now I can drool. So that's that. You know, they may be the smallest, but you give them a chance, and by the time they're six months old, they all catch up. OK. He wants his kitten back. You want your kitten back? Drool and all. Drool and all. Bird nose is real good. We see this quite a bit. But they can get over it with a little help from us. All right. We're really excited just to watch her grow and see what she becomes. Oh, oh thank you for the kisses. For that special someone. She's pretty. <laughs> And you're adorable. February is the time to show some extra love. Every day I come home, she like jumps on me and kisses me. And... Valentine's, that's you know, the day for lovers and idiots. When was Valentine's Day? It was Wednesday, wasn't it? 50 years is a long time to be married. The polls are a good example of how to do it right. Thank you, sweetie. Here we are again. Yeah. You ready up there? It's been a lonely Valentine's for these ladies because there aren't any bulls at Stow Farm. 1979, uh, I was attacked by our, our bull, but he wasn't mad at me or I wouldn't be here. He was just showing me who was boss. So we haven't had a, a bull on the place since then. We breed all artificial. But artificial insemination requires an expert's touch to determine when the time is right. 22. Uh, Artificial insemination is really difficult because you got one shot. It's not like a bull that breeds them all day long. This this one is going to be in heat by herself in about three days. OK. So tail pain, lipstick. So these pregnancy checks are even more important for them than other farmers that use bulls because they do time breeding. 12, 22. Pregnant. And that's why I don't want to go to the casino. I do enough gambling right here on the farm. <laughs> Keeping track of reproductive cycles is tough, but sometimes just trying to identify the cow is hard enough. Oh, 74? I'll take your word for it. Oh, is there a 190? 28? 98. 98. Sometimes when I'm at stove farms, I feel like we're playing bingo. Is it just 30? No, we don't have a 30. 
The cows in heat are marked with bright pink paint, while Bill calculates the final pregnancy tally. We had 21 that were bred, and there was uh, 13 that were uh, positive. It's quite well. I, I, I'm, I'm satisfied. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Yeah. See you later. Uh. Back at the clinic, a chihuahua needs help. He's shaking, and he does not shake like this. My dog, as soon as I came home today, he was gasping for air. His tongue was purple. It looked like there was phlegm coming out of his nose. I'm about ready to cry. Yeah, he's the world to me. He's always been the world to me. We are hoping that we can take him home with us today. Okay. It seemed like he was going to faint. I looked at his tongue. His tongue was completely purple. All right. He's old. He has an enlarged heart. He's shaking, and he does not shake like this. My dog, as soon as I came home today, he was gasping for air. He does have a heart murmur. It's not terrible, but it's for sure there. Enlarged hearts can happen from two different reasons. Because the heart muscle itself has gotten really, really thick, it's just overgrown, bulked up, can't work properly. The other is the heart muscle has gotten super thin. It's turned into basically a big water balloon, and it can't pump efficiently because the muscle wall isn't thick enough. It can be a syncopal episode or a fading episode from either not having enough blood volume circulate, or maybe there's even a problem in the lungs where they sound OK today. Well, your color's much better. Look, look how pink you are now. Even as I looked at him when I first walked in to now, he's much, much pinker now. So that's good. Spikes improved. However, heart problems still put him at risk for future episodes. He's been on heart medicine, correct? Yes. I'd like to put him on a second heart medication. Uh, that will also help uh, lower the blood pressure so it's easier for his heart to pump, and it'll give him better color. We're going to modify some of his medications, and we're going to add some back in that he was taken off from here in the recent past, and then give him some anti-inflammatories to help reduce any inflammation that might be contributing to the loss of oxygenation. What happened an hour ago before you guys got here, I have no idea. Um, and I don't find any lingering effects. Like I said, he's alert, he's responsive, his color's better. He's got a heart murmur. He had that last time you were here. But I think if we can give him another medication to help the heart function a little bit better, then we'll get some more time from him. I thought that my dog was possibly on the brink of death today. Knowing now that Dr. Brenda cleared him of all his condition and put him on a regimen of medication, I feel a lot more at ease. As winter melts into spring. Believe me, I'm ready for warm weather. New life is born into the world. Newborn animals are always cute. It's calving season, it's lambing season. The goats are being born, horses are being born. In between farm calls. What are we doing for Easter? You are making breakfast. The Pole family gathers to celebrate. That was a good sermon, but I am hungry. Breakfast. What? What? A nice, what healthy. Happened, what, what happened to the eggs Benedict? Well, I figured, uh... I'll fix something for us. Thanks, right, thanks for trying, though, Charles. OK. Happy Easter. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be a quiet Easter, and that's good. The clinic is hopping. Or not. Cookie, he has a hurt foot. He got hurt by maybe a fox or something. That's Cookie, huh? Mm hmm We'll be with you in a minute. He's one of my favorites because he's one of the only bunnies I got my birthday. He is the only bunny I got my birthday. So what happened with the rabbit? We're not sure. They're free ranging outside, and it's turned into quite an open gas. It's OK, Cookie. Front leg here? Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. There's some swelling underneath here, but it's not broke. I think it's, that's awesome. When I look at it, the leg is fine. But he did get hurt. Somebody got a hold of it. Look at this. There's a piece of skin that's dying off. See this? Oh, yeah. This piece of skin had no circulation, and it's just hanging on the leg. And it's a mechanical problem that he's limping. So I'm going to cut this dead piece off 
Now there is a good line between the life and the dead tissue, so basically you have to just pull it off and let it heal up. I hang on to him for a minute, like that. Cook, cook, cook. That's it. Awesome. And now we'll get you some spray and it'll heal up. Good, that's what we wanted to hear. There you go, good. I feel happy because he doesn't have a broken leg or anything, so he'll heal faster. Several times a day, if you can. Yep, no okay. problem. Dr. Pulp is very nice, and he fixed up my body. This is how it's been. Sarah's three-week-old chicks are struggling to survive. They're lethargic, barely able to eat or drink. We don't want none. This is the first time we've ever had a problem. My birds are my pets. They're, they're part of our family. I know, I'm so sorry. She is Grace because she is hanging on by the grace of God. She's fighting. We have lost 10 so far. I'm hoping that we get an answer before the whole entire flock is wiped out. I know it. Sarah's flock of newly hatched chicks has been decimated. You don't want none. We have lost 10 so far. I know, I'm so sorry. I'm hoping that we get an answer before the whole entire flock is wiped out. Chickens. Okay. This is day four. She's doing better. That one is day two and looks terrible. Yeah. Sarah and Brian have a bunch of chickens and they are dying. So they're very young yet. Yes, they are three and a half weeks. He's young got ones. the dead ones. So here we have two live ones and two dead ones. Live ones are not feeling well already. I'll see what I can find out on these. OK, thank you very much. Check this one. So a simple piece of stool underneath the microscope. Oh, there he is. That's what I thought. That sucker there. That's the coccidia because these parasites can go from the older chickens to the younger ones, they start basically having diarrhea, they quit eating, and they die. Coccidia destroy the gut wall, preventing their host from absorbing nutrients, leading to dehydration and death. No, I only found a few of them, but that's good enough. When they're dead, it's bad. Coccidia. OK. Anti-coccidia. Yeah, That's what you need. OK. Put it in the water, because I think it goes better than in the food. Okay. They drink more than they will eat. Make sure they drink enough water. OK. Now, is it just these ones or the whole entire? Probably just these. They were probably on a place where there were chickens before. And then they pick it up out of the ground. Basic thing is to prevent it. When you have had a chicken coop, before you put the new chicks in there, clean it out so that all these parasites are dead and gone. We get plenty of water now. Will they come out of this? Hopefully. If you if you treat them right away, yes. That's a lot better news than. Yeah, all the other viral diseases. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We're very relieved because it is a minor thing compared to some of the things we could have been dealing with that would have wiped out the whole entire flock. All right, girls, let's go get you taken care of. We are headed to go pick up the medicine that we need and go home and treat little baby chickies. Fourth of July is coming up. For the Poles, Independence Day is more than just fireworks. Well, the theme for our uh, parade this year is the superheroes. Oh! And that's why we're having all the military people uh, lined that's up and going first in the parade. Nice. Right, so nice. that uh, they they'll be honored the honor. as they walk through it. Yes. Them. 
It's almost the 4th of July, but not everyone looks forward to the explosive celebration. I am here today to get my dog, Chloe, some vaccinations. Hi there. And to get some input on how to maybe calm her anxiety. Patty Ruckel? Yep. Come on in. Chloe has anxiety issues with thunderstorms, fireworks, separation anxiety, other dogs, power tools. So she hates everything, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. She's okay. very skittish. The upcoming holiday could send Chloe over the edge. She gets herself so worked up, and she shakes, and her heart's just a pounding. Considering the 4th of July is coming up, I, w I worry about her having a heart attack. She's petrified. Let me see back. Oh, girl, I know. Life is just terrible. We're not going to hurt you. Is there to shake? Yeah. Can you feel her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy, babe. We're doing a little quick poke here. These are her vaccinations, so she doesn't even realize they really happened. Okay. With anxiety like Chloe's. That's okay. Even something as routine as drawing blood is a challenge. You're all right, Chloe. You're all right. Chloe, that wasn't too bad. There was a little flailing, but I got the sample we needed. But that, the flailing, that's what she does the whole, whole time. time. She's, she's at, at the groomer. Yes. Right, because she's just, she's in fight or flight mode and trying to get away. Right. With 4th of July coming up, I'm a little bit nervous about the fireworks because she she doesn't like loud noises like that. What we need to try to do for her, at least as far as fireworks and thunderstorms, because they kind of are the same thing, mm -hmm. unexpected big mm -hmm. booms. Right, she hates them. And she hates them both. So what I would do with her is put her in a separate room, you know, try to make it as soundproof, lightproof as you can. Right. We're just trying to get enough background noise so she doesn't really recognize that those fireworks are Drown happening. Them out then. But if she's kind of melting down all the time right now, we may have to do something where she's taking a daily medication. I'm gonna put her on a product called uh, clomipramine, and that's an anti-anxiety medicine for her. The anti-anxiety medication will make her feel better about life, but there'll have to be some behavioral modifications that are done too, because it's not enough just to do meds for them. They can't live on the meds their whole life. We need to get her but braver about how she can live with life and how she can tolerate it. If we need to, on the really bad days, like with the 4th of July coming up, we could give her Alprazolam with it for like that particular day. Okay. okay. All right, I think everything else is good. All right. I'm hoping with the medication today or the combinations of medications for Chloe that her, their 4th of July will be a little bit more pleasant. Today, Doc is taking off the glove to help raise money for veterans. <laughs> We're here at the Remus Bowling Alley. We have a lot of veterans. We have a big crowd here today. They serve our country. We have to honor what it did for us. Don't forget that America is free, but freedom is not free. We are here for a special occasion. Everybody knows that. The mission of the Mid-Michigan Honor Flight is to take the veterans to Washington, D.C. for a day of free to see the memorials. Come on, buddy. It's awesome to have the two of them. I mean, it just adds to this event. He says you want a kiss? Everybody was excited that Dr. Pohl was going to be able to make it. Give me a big hug. He had kids just waiting, lined up for him when we got here to meet him. There we go. Are you smiling? <laughs> Where's Charlie? Oh, there he is. And of course, we know Charlie pretty well. And we weren't quite sure how Ian was going to bowl against a horse. How does he bowl? You'll have to wait and see. Doc's bowling for charity. His opponent, Charlie the mini horse. Come on, buddy. How does he bowl? You'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Charlie could bowl a 300. Never see Dr. Pohl bowl. Hi, Jenna. Hi. <laughs> Give me a kiss. So I'm not really sure who's going to win today. <laughs> he goes first. OK, we're first. It's been years since I was bowling. And yes, he has an advantage oh. a little bit. Charlie! He's standing on four legs. He doesn't fall easy. And he has guards on the side of the alley. I don't. I got to beat him, right? Yep. <laughs> My dad started off really rusty. But then somehow, beast mode came out of him. He bowled, I think, three strikes in a row to pull past Charlie. So who won? You did. No, 
I did. Yeah. Right, thank you. <laughs> so I think that is a very, very good success when you have that many people there and you know they honor the veterans. Come here. Shake. Shake. Good boy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Now we're cooking Thanksgiving dinner here at the clinic. Deep frying the turkey. Here? Yeah. Charles always has uh, different ideas. He remembers uh, when everybody was home yet how I deep fry Turkish. So he wants to deep fry this turkey. Do we have a fire truck on standby? <laughs> <laughs> Krista has a turkey that is not doing good. It's OK, Feathers. The name is Feathers, and uh, nobody wants to look at it. So she drove two hours to come to us. Get you fixed up, little lady. She is a pet. That's why I'm here. If she was just going to be Thanksgiving dinner, I think I would have just let her go through the motion. So got to do what I got to do. That's the lady that yes. drove fast. I told her to get her butt over here as fast as possible. Yes, you did, and I lost the meeting. Yes, sir. Didn't nobody throw up? No. Nope. Well, that's <laughs> then you do, then you drove all right. Yes. <laughs> I'm always glad to help clients that have sick animals. And yes, if they drive that far just for the turkey, it means that they you know they do like their animals. And this is why I help everybody. Okay, guys, come, come on. on, guys. Thank You're you. Full here. She wouldn't eat or drink, and I noticed that she was just carrying her head and her neck really close to her body. Who scratched you? You did? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta open it. When the turkey's not eating or drinking, it's a dead turkey usually. Not a lot of phlegm in there. No worms. You cannot wait too long and make sure that you do something in order to keep him happy. And it smells good. Holy cow. See that? Oh! And that's why the leg is swollen. See that? That's why she's sore. That's yeah. bumblefoot. Most of the bumblefoot infections are a staph infection that comes from some kind of injury. Now you can tell why it hurts for her to walk. And then it just starts collecting pus around it but there's hurt very much for those animals to walk on it. Well, let's see if I can get that bumblefoot taken care of. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Sometimes that crush is almost rock hard, but see, that's the yeah. stab infection, and it hurts. Yeah. Because they walk on it and pack it down. OK. And then they sit there, and they don't move, because it hurts. Exactly right. It all depends how far this condition has gone, what I do and what I use. OK. In this case, an oral antibiotic should clear up Feather's Bumblefoot and have her up and eating in a few days. Yeah. I believe she had Bumblefoot. Bumble. Bumble. B-U-M-B-L-E. And just Bumble. like this. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, she's fine. It tastes she's good. Do you want some? <laughs> no, it's in the turkey's mouth. OK. So now you know. Yes. She should have a full recovery, so. It was a long drive for just a little visit, but it was well worth it. Smells very good. The turkey looks just absolutely golden and beautiful. Da, 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 da. My dad always cuts. He's the knife man. It's moments like these when you really feel that togetherness. That's something to be really thankful for. This Thanksgiving, I'm more thankful because everybody is here and everybody is healthy. We had a good year. Everybody's happy and feeling good. 